Good afternoon, boys and girls. Um, this is our uh, next project that we're going to work on, and it's based on the artist uh, Sonia Delaunay, who was actually a Russian-born artist but lived most of her life in Paris, um, working during abstract expressionist time. So her style was called geometric abstraction, and we are going to mimic her style in our first painting, which will be done with watercolor. Um, however, if you don't have watercolor, you can always use markers. Um, that will be fine as well. So let's talk about your materials. You'll need some, sorry, you'll need a piece of white paper and you'll need a pencil and an eraser. And you'll need um, a black Sharpie, a black either thin or, or normal, normal size Sharpie, a paintbrush, watercolor paint, you will also need a series of items that you can trace around for circles and half circles. So for example, I have a protractor, I have um, a lid from a mason jar, I have a lid from a tennis ball container, I have a lid from a bottle of paint, I have a little bowl that's also round, and I have a pail that I can either use this side to trace the circle or this side to trace the circle. So these are the items you are going to need in addition to a ruler, okay? So that is what we're going to use for today's project. Now, <clears throat> you can follow me exactly as I do it, or you can just watch and follow along, but change things up a little bit as long as you're following the concepts that she has here, which is circles, half circles, lines, and then when it's time to actually paint it in, you can see that just because one side is one color doesn't mean that it continues on the other side. So there's sort of this breaking up of sections that's created by the way that she does color, okay? So let's go ahead and start working on this. So you want your piece of paper to be lengthwise and the piece of paper can be whatever size you have. So I'm using a standard um, printer size piece of paper, but because if you're going to use watercolor, you wanna make sure that you have thicker paper. So thick white construction paper is fine or uh, cardstock would be fine or just thicker uh, mixed media paper would also be fine. But if all you have is printer paper, might be a little bit hard to paint on that because it's pretty thin. Um, so you might wanna go with marker, uh, unless maybe you like glued or taped several sheets of paper together that were thin, that could, that could also work. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my ruler to create sort of a dramatic sweeping triangle to start, kind of a triangle. So I'm gonna start kind of going across my paper at a diagonal with the tip of that triangle shape being at the top end of the paper and the base of the triangle being at the bottom end of the paper. <clears throat> Sorry, that was my little AC. Okay, so I'm going to hold my ruler in place and draw a line that goes all the way from the top to the bottom. And then I'm going to change my ruler over to this side. And this time I'm not going to take it all the way to the bottom of the paper, just so that I have a little variety. I'm gonna put this diagonal to where it ends on the right side of the paper. So now I've got um, sort of this, you know, angular shape. I will not use my ruler again for a little while. Now I'm gonna start adding my shapes. Okay, so I'm gonna start in here using this protractor and I'm going to hold it in place and trace around it like that. And then I'm going to also come over here and sometimes I'm going to use the inside of the protractor. So see how I'm lining the inside section up with the inside of the actual protractor so that now my curve can be on that line and the curve is on this line. And then in order to do sort of a repeat, 
of the protractor, I have to kind of move this up a little bit like this, but I'm not gonna go all the way because if I go all the way, it'll be way too narrow here on the sides and I'm trying to keep it fairly uniform throughout. So I'm gonna add my own lines like that. And then I can take, let's see, I can take this tennis container lid. Now, these are the things I found laying around my house to help me create my circles, but you guys can definitely, whatever you find that will help you create circles. So that can be, you know, little plates, um, circular coasters, um, caps, bottle caps, school supply caps, cups, jars, anything you have that, you know, has a circular base, like this bottle here has a circular base, this little glue bottle has a little circular base, anything like that will work. So you don't have to have the same exact stuff as me, you just have to try to have some similar things as me. So I'm gonna put my bowl there and just pay attention. Like sometimes it's good to stand over something so that you can actually um, make sure you kind of have it balanced out with what's happening. So notice how this time I allowed my bowl to go all the way around, but for you know some of my pieces, I just did half circles. So it's kind of creating this deconstructed thing that's happening. And then I'm gonna come over here and come up here and add this portion. And do you see how that overlaps that? And then I can come in here and on the inside of this cap, but I'm not gonna go all the way to the other side. I'm gonna stop there. And because I don't want everything to appear exactly. Um, I want some things to overlap some things and some things I don't want to overlap things. So I'm going to take away this line here that's coming from the original second line that I did and I'm gonna take this away as well. So now I've got that and then I can add this little cap and I wanna make sure it's centered as much as possible. And I'm going to draw around it so that now I have this circle that's going all the way through, but it's not going all the way through, but the other pieces are not going all the way through necessarily. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my protractor and I'm gonna bring it down here. And again, I'm lining up the inside of my tool with the inside, sorry, with the line that's right there so that I'm landing right on it, okay? And then in order to make another curve that is similar, I'm gonna maneuver my protractor around so I can get that second curve. And then I can erase some of these extra lines that are showing through. Again, we're trying to create this play between, you know, what is overlapping what. And ideally, we're gonna end up with something that looks, you know, that has some illusions that are happening and some interesting layering. This idea that something is there and then something is not there. So then we come over here and we can connect this side over here with this. So you see how now that's connecting over here with that one? So I've got that, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase this, but I'm gonna leave this and maybe I'll erase this piece and add this here. So again, it's that idea of, of what's above what and what's behind what and what's overlapping what. It's really fun to kind of mess with this idea. All right, so and then over here, I'm gonna add this over, right over here. Okay.
Okay, so again, what's on top of what and what's being hidden. Um, and then let's see, where else can we go? I'm gonna go over here with my inside protractor space and I'm gonna do that. And then I'll be able to create another curve right here and then take my smallest cap and go all the way around. And I can erase this in here. So you see how I'm sort of building? But again, yours does not need to be exactly like this, okay? It does not need to be the same thing at all. As a matter of fact, if it was exactly the same, it would just not be that interesting because, I don't know, we're all different, right? So we're gonna go over this like that. I'm gonna continue it right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and erase these marks here. And once I am satisfied with my composition, I may choose to add a few more details. Again, I'm just tracing with my circular tools or circular objects that I have found around my house to help. And I'm gonna use the inside of this piece and you can see how I've created this kind of interesting composition that is similar in the style of Sonia Delaunay. All right, then what you're gonna do is you're going to start adding your watercolor paint. Now, you wanna make sure that you have some water because every time you change colors, you wanna make sure that you clean your brush off so that you can change to new colors. And you wanna make sure that you also are able to um, dry your brush to kind of check to see if that color has actually left. So whenever you're using watercolor, you wanna make sure that you actually wet your brush really, really well. And you want to activate that paint, okay? When your palette's really dry, nothing's happening until you kind of stir within the little palette wells to get the colors that you want. So then you can go in here and start laying down your colors. So I'm really using, I'm using a flat head brush, but you can also use a round brush, a round tip brush. And if you end up going over the outlines a little bit, that's not that big of a deal because we're going to adjust everything with marker after but don't let yourself paint with a dry brush, meaning make sure you're dipping your brush in the water and in the paint often so that you're getting these nice, crisp bands of color because there's no reason for you to sit here and force and, and force yourself to get all scratchy. Now, what I like to do for efficiency is I like to um, move around and use the same color in different spaces, then I'm not having to clean my brush in between every single step, but instead I'm choosing the color sort of systematically in different places. And then once I'm sort of, you know, I've done enough of one color, I can then go ahead and start a different color. So I think I'll come down here and do this way. Notice how I hold my brush, you guys. I'm holding my brush close to the metal part at the bottom and I'm also using the edge or the tip of my brush to help create the color within my space, okay? Now, if you don't do that, you'll just end up kind of having this really big sloppy mess. And it's not that you're gonna ruin your painting, but it just means you'll have to do a lot more um, kind of clean up once it dries, you'll have to go back and kind of adjust too many things. So you wanna really try to use the edge of the brush whenever you're using it on the you know, edges of a shape. And then you wanna be able to use, you know, the larger part of the brush on the inside to fill things in. Um, another thing I want you to realize when you're painting is if you 
have a piece of watercolor that's very wet still and it touches another section that's also very wet, your two colors are going to bleed together. And sometimes we want that effect with watercolor, but when it comes to this painting, we really wanna to try to have a little more control and not have our colors bleed together because we're sort of mimicking the style of Miss Delaunay, who had this very clean, sort of sharp, sharp style of painting, all right? So here we go. I think I will switch to a new color. So notice I go in here, I clean my brush off and I rub it on my towel back and forth like this. And once no more colors coming off, I know that I can go ahead and move on to a new color. So I'm gonna do this mustard yellow and I'm gonna do that right here. And basically, my friends, you're just going to keep going until you fill in all your sections. And then you'll also wanna make sure that you fill in this background area, okay? So I'm gonna paint with you for just a little while longer, just a few more minutes, and then I'm gonna let you get um, keep going with yours, okay? Maybe you're already working with me and you are getting through this and enjoying yourself. But remember, just because I finish giving a demo doesn't mean you're finished, okay? You wanna to try to finish your work as often as possible. You wanna to try to finish it during um, your specialist, your art time, your art class time, so that you can maintain a schedule and you don't feel overwhelmed with all the things you have to do, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna stop here with my yellow. Again, I'm not pushing hard with my brush. I'm being really gentle with my brush because I don't want to ever push like this and be doing that with my brush. Like that's not really helpful. So you wanna try as much as possible to use the tip or the head of that brush um, for clean edges and then you want to try to use the wider part of the brush to actually fill in, but at no point am I ever like pushing down and applying a bunch of pressure to my brush because that will just ruin your brush and it will actually not serve you as far as the way you're trying to paint. Okay. So the other thing I want you to notice is no color is gonna touch another color, okay? So I'm always going to maintain different colors lying right next to different colors. Right now, I'm not having to you know, deal with that quite yet, but that's because I'm sort of painting in a way that's organized that allows me to be able to focus on different sections without those sections touching one another so that I'm not having to wet paint on wet paint. Okay, so I've got this here. And again, if you don't have watercolor, which I think you do, I feel like we gave you guys some watercolor even in your little packs, school supply packs that you picked up and your materials that you picked up. But if for some reason you do not have some, um, I mean, I've seen watercolor paint at the dollar store, but if you don't have it at all and you can't get it, you can always use marker. Just use your markers in the same way that you would paint. Nice smooth layers that don't cause you to have all this like texture and all these streaks and stuff. Okay, new color. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more color with you guys and then I'm going to let you complete this on your own. And then when you're finished, you just take a photo with it on Seesaw and upload it so that I get to see the magic that you have created. Yes, slowly I'm going on those edges. I'm really taking my time when I get to those edges to have a very clean, to have a really clean edge, right? So yeah, you have to take it slow. This isn't the kind of painting where you're gonna like go super fast. Um, so take your time and build your colors slowly so that you're happy with your results. Okay, so this is what you're going to work on. And when it's finished, 
it's going to be completely filled with color and remember that just because something starts on this side of that line doesn't mean it needs to be the same color on the other side the idea is to kind of deconstruct your shapes okay so take apart those shapes so they're not the same on both sides i am so excited to see what you guys make i can't wait to see what you do i hope you enjoy this project and have a great time and i look forward to seeing you guys soon love you guys bye